What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Byte for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Let's get to it, and a new potential design for the next iPhone has now surfaced from two separate sources. Now buckle up, because I know some of you might not like this. A user on the Asian blogging site Weibo released an image of what appeared to be a manufacturing design to the rumored 5.8-inch OLED display iPhone. And look at that. Is that a touch ID sensor on the rear side below the Apple logo? Now the image shows a vertical dual camera lens and appears to be in the engineering verification testing stage. It also features a larger display with minimal top and bottom bezels, just like that Galaxy S8. Then reputable iPhone leaker Sonny Dixon just released his own picture of the rumored iPhone's design schematics that feature, guess what, a touch ID sensor on the rear with the vertical camera design and height and width measurements that match up exactly with the previous leak. Is this fake or nah? We heard Cowan and Company's report from last week's show that Apple was having problems with yield rates for integrating the underglass fingerprint sensor directly into the display. Now, Samsung had similar problems, and now Apple may have to consider one of their alternative designs. We know Apple is working with at least 10 different iPhone designs from previous reports, but I'm just going to take a step back here. Now, there's a lot of you that are saying, no, no, do not do this, Apple. But you know what? I'm completely okay with this design if they can't get the fingerprint sensor on the front panel this year. It will be a stopgap until then, and you know what? It has to be. Now, maybe they'll surprise and do what Samsung couldn't do this year, get it working on the front. Now, I've used the rear fingerprint sensor on the Google Pixel, and it naturally just feels right. Like, check this out. Just try putting your phone on the table, okay? Pick it up. I'm going to pick this one up. And your hands, they don't grab around it. They, in fact, kind of just naturally fall into this spot, and your index finger ends up roughly in that sweet spot. Now, the biggest bummer is for people who are used to unlocking their phone while it rests on a desk or table and look at it without picking it up. I feel for you. But remember, Apple told us it took courage to remove the headphone jack. Courage. The courage to move on, do something new that betters all of us. And our team has tremendous courage. So maybe they'll call this move bravery. All right, and guess what? None of this is official, so we could all be worried about nothing at all. So what do you think of the rumored design leaks? Are you okay with it? Do you completely despise it? Let us know in the comments, and I'll read the ones that don't call me a skunk or a ladyboy. All right, another follow-up report from Digitimes confirms that the new Pro iMac will likely be ready for very late 2017. Described as a server grade, the new iMac will feature an Intel Xeon E3-1285 processor with ECC RAM up to 64 gigs and NVMe solid state storage up to two terabytes with USB-C ports and support for a new AMD GPU. Now, the report adds that the consumer versions for the 21.5 inch and 27 inch sizes will be manufactured by Quanta and could launch in July or in August timeframe, but the Pro iMac will arrive at the end of the year. And if you've been holding out or haven't purchased a Mac since 2013, Apple is making iMovie, GarageBand, and iWorks apps for the Mac and iOS free for all users. I said free. Now, they've made these apps available to new Mac and iOS owners, but now everyone can get them. And speaking of free, I have to mention that Blizzard has made the original StarCraft available for free to promote the 4K remastered version of the game coming out later this year. Now, you know how many hours I played of this game instead of meeting girls, but check it out. It works. I downloaded it. You can play online, and it even includes the Brood Wars expansion. So just check out this link, and you'll find the download for both Mac and Windows. All right, if you think that Apple has left the creative world in the dust because of its lack of powerhouse Mac support, there are still some cool stories about how creative pros are using the Apple's current product line for amazing work. Now, check this out. Publisher Condé Nast unveiled the first ever travel publication cover to be shot on an iPhone 7 Plus. In its May 2017 issue of Traveler, they used the iPhone 7 Plus's portrait mode and applied the depth of field to the shot of this boat taken in St. Bart's. Now, that's pretty awesome. Our good friend of the show, CNET's own videographer, John Kim, uses his iPhone 7 Plus to take pictures of fish from Thai restaurants. And yeah, that was good. All right, and what about that iPad Pro, my favorite Apple product because that screen is so juicy. Artist, teacher, and sports fan Rob Jenneret III, who goes by the name Robzilla, 
uses the iPad Pro, the Apple Pencil, and Adobe Illustrator Draw to create some amazing illustrations of NBA superstars. He's done work for the Washington Wizards, who have no chance of getting to the NBA Finals, and my team, the Golden State Warriors, with everyone's favorite player, Kevin Durant, who left to join a team light years ahead of the entire NBA. Now this is just amazing stuff. You can check out his work on his Instagram right here. And also, I can't wait for the Warriors Blue a 3-1 lead comments. All right, that's gonna do it for this week. You can email us at theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. And again, let us know how you feel about that iPhone rear touch ID design. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.